Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. It's episode one, two, three. Easy to remember that one, didn't have to even look. Um, 123 shows uh, in a row as well. I don't think we've missed one yet. Um, welcome one and all. I hope you're all very well. If you are uh, in the UK, I hope you're trying to keep cool. I've got the window open, which I know is not really the done thing nowadays. You're supposed to keep them closed uh, and the curtains drawn, but I don't want to do that. And I've got my big, I've got my big muff on today because I've got the fans going. So I want to, I don't want to disturb you with that. So hopefully you won't, won't be picking any of that up. Um, but anyway, I hope you're well. And um, even if you're not in the UK, I hope you're well and having a lovely summer or winter, if, depending which hemisphere you're on. Um, welcome to the show. Um, we have a brilliant guest for you as well uh, as normal. And uh, before we get into any of that let's first of all let's just remind you to do this like comment subscribe and share if you can please that'd be fantastic like button is just underneath the video uh, feel free to comment in the chat if you're watching live if you're not watching live leave your comments under the videos uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do share us around um, we don't mind. Uh, please share us around to anybody that you uh, think might be interested in the show. If you want to donate to our channel to keep us going on the air, we thoroughly appreciate it. You can do that in the um, the, the, the YouTube chat through stickers. Um, if you're watching after the event, there's a thanks button just around there somewhere, uh, which does the same sort of thing or of course you can donate to our PayPal account uh, the address is on the screen and also in the description below uh, also you can find us across all of the social media channels Twitter Instagram Facebook and of course right here on YouTube uh, if you want to follow us there and keep up to date with all things ProSynth Networky and of course the community that is on Facebook as well which is a, a rather large one and a rather good one so I am told um, which is very nice to hear um, also um, if you have any questions for us or for our guest today, uh, if you can just prefix them with the letter Q, just helps us pick uh, pick them out and then put them into the, the appropriate bucket so we don't forget. Um, and I think that's kind of like all the formalities out of the way. So um, before we get on to our special guest, who is a returning guest, he came back for more. He loved it so much. Um, we are Benless this week because Ben is supporting Heaven 17 tonight. Get him flash git um so he did say he would try and join us at some point maybe live from the venue that would be interesting uh he has been posting some pictures up on our facebook page um, of heaven 17 um sound checking and uh, martin wears lovely cork 700s that he has on stage and a few other bits and bobs um but hopefully ben will be joining us at some point but in the meantime i go to my other co-host the wonderful the marvelous the splendiferous Kentus Spongus. Uh, there he is, in the middle. Let's bring him in on his own. How are you? Uh, good and tag the gets. No, but, uh, yeah, I'm good. I good. can't remember what the typical German response is. I'm sure Mr. Brooks will tell us in the chat. Mate, I don't even know what I'm saying. So don't All right, OK, fair enough. How's your week been? Hot? Uh, yeah, just a little. Yeah, just, just a little? A little. Yeah. yeah, I, I killed a uh, MIDI to CV converter because I left it in the sun too long. Mm -hmm. so, Oops. Not good. So a nice picture of you with a, a CS80 today. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Richard posted it. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, yeah, that one's... Um, yeah, that, that one's all finished? Kind of sale. Yeah, it's, that's done. Should have gone ages ago. <laughs> yeah, so, Boop. yeah. Been working on anything nice this week? I have been all week working on this um, MIDI CV uh, breakout system the uh, behind four voice okay and this morning i got um the four voice to do uh enveloped cross modulation oh oh suit you sir oh yeah Ooh, sir. Oh. Do, you, do you like sync sir oh. <laughs> yeah so um yeah it's sounding pretty good but good. unfortunately then the cv converter blew up so oh uh, dear not good no well, good to have you uh, back. And uh, uh, how's the kitchen, by the way? Nearly finished. Nearly finished, yeah. yeah have lights next week. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Always good. It's, it's all right during the day, obviously, but at yeah. night. No, it just uh, freaks me out because it's a kitchen where you get your cup of coffee from the tap and the <laughs> cooker doesn't get hot. It doesn't generate any heat. It, it's, <laughs> well, actually, it, it, it runs on magic. 
it really, it, it's, it's freaking me out, and I can't find anything. So, oh well, that's my excuse and for not cooking. I do have to ask. I'm sure there are p- p- plenty of people in the chat who want to know um, how Charlie is because he wasn't uh, wasn't well. Um, yes, Charlie's much better now, thank you. Um, Good. And he passed on whatever it was he had because we thought it might be heat strike. Turns out it's a virus, and he's giving it to, to uh, Noah now. Oh no! So Noah's now a little. Um, little water pistol oh. and we're waiting for him to pass that on to either Siri or oh, Nelly so um, we're hoping we don't get a host pipe band but boy do you need it yeah I bet oi 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 yeah yes indeed well well, good to hear he's on the mend and I hope Noah uh, gets uh, better yeah, soon he's not suffering too bad at all actually good stuff yeah. good stuff brilliant right okay so no nobody else to introduce but our guest who has come back for a second stint he must be mad um <laughs> you might know him from such films as oh blimey I've, as soon as i said that all all the names of the films went out of my head batman, They're batman films yeah batman films superman and superman and Lauren james bond the piano oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and of course the latest james bond as well um he is an ambient sound designer um extraordinaire um you'll also recognize him from the introduction to bittersweet symphony which i'm going to ask him about later it's mr mel wesson Good hello yeah. how hello. are you uh, i wasn't on superman by the way <laughs> sorry i did actually play the part of james bond oh they i thought you yeah, were that, on bond i thought me. you were on bond <laughs> Anyway, an excuse to get in an Aston Martin. I, I know. I never. I, you know, I've, I've only ever been in one Aston. Oh yeah. DB7, a green one. A green oh. one, no less. Yeah, and it belonged to somebody who you know, Ken, and it broke down a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> ah. Well, where do we find you? To, uh, this is your studio, of course, and we're, we're well, seeing a we, bit more of it. Yeah. Well, it's it's changed, right? Mm. And, it's back a bit. It's now green. Can you see the lovely green? Oh yes, yes, very nice. It goes with the sofa. It's green sofa, yeah. And what mm. it was, I moved everything around, so I've now got a big space behind me. Mm-hmm. I have to walk. I get exercise when I go and use it. <laughs> it's important for somebody whose day starts like ten feet away from the studio door. And <laughs> um, yeah, so no, it's actually it's not completely functioning fully yet but it's ergonomically a lot better it actually sounds really good and i can i can do this i can get back to my oh look at that this is where my um uh keyboard and you know monitor mm-hmm. right? so i can step back and forth and listen to stuff properly and actually stuff always sounded good in this room which is weird because i never spent any time or thought on it <laughs> it was more the sort of remote control um Put your questions, you know, everybody has the same speed, they they still have the same questions, and they're so close, they're almost like headphones. So, yeah, really, matter where you are in the room, it's like you get blasted. And, um, Dude. no, it sounds good. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be in it. I've been out of action for about a month with you know, sort of getting it sorted and having decorators in, and then me on my hands and knees yeah. trying to figure out where all the wires go. And, yeah. um, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. and the good. <laughs> Is I'm finding out stuff that doesn't work very well. Uh-huh. I've got your number. <laughs> no, it's all it's all it's all good, and it's a little bit hot. Bit hot. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say with this heat, with all that yeah, stuff yeah. switched on, it's um, it's not good. Yeah. It's in the winter though. Absolutely Absolute. saves the bills. Mm. Yeah, you need all of this gear, and you'll be mm. warm post. Yeah. It yeah. might be cheaper to buy it. Cheaper than a winter bill, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've got to say, the, the two masks on top of the oh. synthy, hmm. are they Bond-related? They're, Bond they're Bond replicas, yeah. They're replicas, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that again the other day because um, I got the 4K version for my yeah. uh, for Christmas, actually. And I only just got a, a 4K Blu-ray player, and it's, it's right. such a good film. I still haven't got one. I haven't seen No Live. I've got oh. the, I haven't seen it. Oh, what? <laughs> it's pathetic, isn't it? It's crazy. Oh, it's a great film, great film. Oh, dear. Well, listen, welcome again, uh, uh, Mel, and, of course, Kent, and uh, welcome to everybody that's uh, watching 
uh, in the chat room and anyone that's watching after the show welcome 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 and uh, do make sure you bookmark us subscribe hit the bell you know what to do uh, and come back because we're here every week with great guests and we'll tell you about some new ones coming up uh, at the end of the show but in the meantime um, before we sort of have a chat with Mel about what he's been doing um, we've got some news topics this week we didn't really have any last week we had a great guest we had Dina Perlman on last week uh, but there wasn't a lot of news and um, this is kind of what happens this time of year everyone goes on holiday and things slow down so a couple of these might be a little old um, as in you know seven days so old um, but there are a couple of new newish things in here so we'll crack on through um, this isn't necessarily news but I did want to uh, direct everyone to this uh, particular offer that is currently on because it's a bit of a stonker um, it is where are we let me find the correct tab here so this is um, an offer that's on at plugin boutique and they are knocking out native instruments fm8 uh, with a massive not like it's like a 94 95 percent discount it's 12 quid or 10 bucks or something like that it's just silly stupid money for a very very powerful plugin um, unfortunately fm8 has never been updated to work with new m1 max so if you've got one of those forget it but anything up to you know so the intel stuff or of course on pc this is an absolute steal and whenever and obviously i talk about fm a lot being a big fan lots of people then come back to me and say have you got fm8 have you got fm8 and i never had it now i do because it was only 12 quid why not <laughs> And it's actually not bad. The only problem with it is just it's a little small on my big monitors. It's a little small. Um, you can't really scale it that well unless I can't find the, the setting. Somebody will probably tell me uh, in the chat. Anyway, it's 12 quid. Go and fill your boots. Um, is this something, Mel, have you ever played around with um, I, FM8 at all? I actually have it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and? I've, I've had it for years. I really like it. You know, when I first got it, because it was part of, um, it part of a package, wasn't it? Yeah, they do complete, yeah. don't they? Yeah. That was great. It was part of a package. And I have to say, you know, I thought, um, FM, I didn't open it for about a year. <laughs> and one day, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Well, what's, what's this? I opened it up and I was really kind of looking for something, you know? Mm. I can't remember what it, what it was. But I was just frustrated with whatever I was doing. And I opened it up and I sort of started you know, joining around. And I, I, and from then on in, it was I kind of re, rekindled my, um, you know, sort of joy of FM going mm. back the 80s you know going back to the dx and, and all that. Yeah. i really like it i really like what they've done with it because they've taken it forward and i think it's a shame yeah. if it it's going to stop you know i've got so many plugins or rather i don't have so many plugins mm. because mac have changed the the chip or the l or the lf or whatever and yeah. whoever's it's developed this has had it for so many years i mean it looks spectral delay native instrument spectral delay another one i yeah. love that to death and I haven't had that for 15 years, you know. Yeah. But you remember these things. So, I, I, um, yeah, I'm a, I am a fan. Well, I wonder um, if this price reduction, because th there will have been uh, some sort of supply thing with uh, Native Instruments that, you know, they'll have had to have got some sort of approval to do this. I wonder if this is, look, we're not developing FM8 anymore beyond what it is. We're mm -hmm. going to come up with, you know, FM9, should we say, um, because well that, that was a fairly logical assumption because the one before this was fm7 so um but maybe they're going to come out with a new improved version and this is a way of building up the user base so mm -hmm. that when the new version comes out there's always there's going to be a, a large number of people wanting to upgrade but um kent have you ever had this played with this did you download it thoughts oh i've had this donkeys yeah 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 i must yeah. be the only one yeah well you don't use contact do you no, t typically not. I've never been a massive Native Instruments fan, so yeah, yeah. yeah I think because I think if you buy the bundle, it was it's in there. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But weirdly yeah. enough, I had it before that. I actually bought it separately. Um, I think when it first came out. Right. Strangely enough, and t for me, I mean, you're not you're going to hate me for this, but <laughs> for me, me hate you. FM8 sounds like what an FM synth should have sounded like. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't deny the fact that it's uh, much more accessible in terms yeah. of you know programming. So yeah, uh, and, and it, it does had that bigger kind of thing going on, doesn't it? The mm. bigger sound. No. As well. 
Yeah. Uh, and as Mel said, you know, it, it moved things forward, oh, which is yeah. always, you know, which you always should be doing. Mm. Yeah. Now it's mm. uh, look. I mean, I've I finally got it, so I'm going to play around with it. Um, I'm so I'm not a massive Native Instruments fan, and that's mainly because of their UIs. Although some of them have improved over uh, certainly in the last year or so, mm. it's just that the, their UI seems a little. What's may, maybe German? Maybe that's what it is. They it's it's very kind of precise and you know square lettering and it just doesn't appeal to me visually and i know that you know you should be maybe focusing on the sound of the synthesizer rather than the look of it but yeah it's it's uh yeah i'm going to try it i'm going to give it a go i've only lost 12 quid if i don't like it so yeah, there you go yeah, yeah. but uh yeah i don't know how long this offer is on for but um i believe the chat is uh, sorry the link is in the chat and it will be underneath this video as well it's at plugin boutique and i don't know if they're doing it anywhere else but that's where i found it it's 12 quid um so you know if you if you fancy uh, dipping your toe in the waters of frequency modulation mm. that's not a bad place to start talking of fm and this is this is just a quick thing this this literally popped up in my feed about half an hour before we went on air so the guys uh know nothing about this but i just thought i'd put it out there because there's a slightly interesting aspect to it um yamaha and dom sigalas uh, have been putting out some yamaha synth space history videos uh, a couple of weeks ago it was the sy99 today it is the mighty dx1 and dom is uh giving a, a big demonstration of it there was however this one little thing that i noticed and i'm just going to skip to this part of the video here and i don't know maybe can can you spot anything that's different about the um the surface of this dx1 and i wish i had a prize to give away if anybody could uh, tell me and please don't go and look in the youtube chat comments because i mentioned it in there and but this is a fairly unique dx1 right can you can you see what it is yet the top left that top panel. left panel yeah don't remember sure. that. Oh. exactly so on on the top left on that um what is the, mainly the led panel yeah. that that's an operator diagram that's showing you how the op that's a, an operator layout mm -hmm. and normally on most of the production ones um this algorithm chart which is at the top here which mm. looks like the same it looks like it's been lifted from a dx7 is normally on that left hand side and i just thought i know it's not much but it just looks a little odd and I thought, what's going on here what what's different and i had to go downstairs and look at the dx1 oh yeah that's it that's what's different um so this is a, a rare one and i don't know why and i'm going to ask um maybe i'll get an answer but I just anyway look it's it's a, somebody playing a DX1 and they sound amazing in the right hands and Dom has got some very good hands and, mm. and does some really great stuff on it um so go and check out um the Yamaha uh synth official YouTube channel where that video mm. got uploaded today um and and just go and avail yourself there's my comment of course um <laughs> go and avail yourself of um 15 odd minutes of a lovely little demonstration of the mighty DX1 so there you go um right let's uh bring up some, some more news topics now we did kind of mention this this uh last week in a rather disparaging way so now now it's t um, time f for it to redeem itself in our eyes or certainly in my eyes anyway uh there's a new instrument from spitfire audio labs and it's called foghorn um and if actual fact it's probably going to be best if i play the demo video first and then we'll get an idea of what a sampled foghorn uh, sounds like um you come listen to my wife snoring it's probably not going to be much different to that i can say that because she's downstairs um watching well, yeah probably no she doesn't watch this uh let's have a listen to um to the demo
Now I'm actually kind of glad that we didn't talk about this until today because um, I've kind of got a feeling that this is right up your alley, Mel. It reminds me of something. Mm. Like the green night I was once in. <laughs> dreams I was wanting. Also, side issue, I once stayed in a lighthouse keeper's cottage on the Isle of Wight. Oh, wow. It looks a bit like that. Probably wasn't. Yeah, it could that, be. That, that was a good holiday. Uh, rah, it's that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A bit more, you know? Yeah, rah, yeah. You know? Instead of like hiring an entire orchestra and spending months twiddling around with it and, and throwing everything you possibly can at it, they took the easy route and sampled a foghorn. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's copping out, isn't it? Come on. Well, I suppose, yeah. But I mean, would this be something? Would this be a tool that you would use? You know, you know what? I I've got a weird relationship with sample libraries. In that I, first of all, I don't really own very many of them, um, mm -hmm. and the ones that I do. I tend to use more as, um, you know, take them in and use them as source, you know. So they, I mean, my favourite go-to thing at the moment, which I will willingly talk about later, is my make my shared system with the morphogens. Everything at the moment goes into that and comes out sounding like, you know, no, nothing that went in. So yeah. I do tend to sort of use sample libraries as, you know, kind of food, you know, like source, yeah. source from the, yeah. material for the machines to to disembowel it and do hideous things with it sure I, yeah but you know what i mean yeah it's it's it's, it's i don't actually <gasps> spitfire guys i do know some of the spitfire guys, and they're really nice people but i don't actually own a single spitfire mm -hmm. thing well this is nice because you wouldn't you don't have to pay for it it's free oh, I'm, um, there. I'm gonna get yeah. this <laughs> yeah, just just download the the Spitfire Audio app and then download all of the labs libraries. They're all completely free of charge, mm -hmm. and that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, I we, we spoke about it last week very briefly, and I said, look, I, I've had a play with it, and it's just lots of, mm -hmm. and that's not really, you know, my well, kind of thing. But I can more. imagine that you know if you're creating an ambient well, kind of bed, I'm kind of. But you know, but we did do the. You know, I mean, some of it's commented on the Zimmer round, which which I was involved in, you know, 12, 12 years ago now, I think. Mm. You know, it's probably not something that I would re revisit personally, to be honest. Yeah. You know, um, um, I, I think it's great. You know, I think it, it's it's a sound, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's different, you know, it's different. And, and to be honest, you probably would take that and put 20 other things under it and yeah. take, it, take it somewhere else. But... Um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, it's an interesting thing, and it's a nice video, and they do do really good stuff. And one yeah. day, I will sit down and look at what they do, and, mm. and oh, it's it's not really for me. Yeah, but this is good. I mean, I like I like this. Yeah, yeah. Like Ken, you you like a bit of ambient? It's a lie, I tell you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but um, this is this is one word, and that word is niche hmm. ah, um, yeah. I must admit the video it sounded a lot better than when you were playing playing it to me over that show over yeah. the show the other week which sounded like you crapped yourself basically but <laughs> it was very sort of like harsh you know because that was in its raw state but yeah I, I can see yeah I can see where they're going for it um, can't really criticise it because it's free well, yes. And you can't criticise free, really, can you? Nope. Unless, unless you're a dick. Anyway. Um, so, <laughs> but, but, it's, there's a, I get, as much as I love Spitfire, and I really, really love Spitfire, um, this has got a sense of, we've got to release something, mm. anything, what if, what can we, what can we do, quick, quick, we've got a week, and that's, yeah. that's what, I've, that's what this particular one felt like. Like yeah. Sort of like, really? Okay. Yeah. Whatever. But I mean, the the whole labs project is supposed to be slightly left field stuff. Uh, you know, it's ambient sounds. Like there's the the London atmospheres one, which I love because mm. it's it's the you know samples of trains and tubes and pedestrians and and all sort of mashed up and and the soft pianos things that they've done and the, the it's all a little bit weird and a little different and i like that this is really kind of pushing that to the to the limits of you know it's because it's 
I, I, I loaded it up and I started playing it and I guess I'm playing it wrong. I'm guess I guess I'm trying to make melodies and chords from it, which is really <laughs> probably not what yeah. you're supposed to do. And so maybe I've come at it from the wrong angle and well, I should if, revisit. If you consider even the things there that the way they were using it in, in that video, there are already sample libraries that cater to that. Yeah. Already. Yeah. You know, yeah, true. Uh, you know, like somebody said in the chat with the you know Zimmer's, blah, the <laughs> mm. the Foghorn sample library didn't exist, so Hans was doing it then. So mm. do you know what I mean? So it, yeah, you know, I, mean, I mean, I've got libraries that can produce that kind of sound already. Yeah. But I suppose the great thing about Labs is that you you download it for free and it yeah. can sit on your hard drive, and maybe some while later you're thinking there's something missed, there's something that's <gasps> Foghorn. Mm. Yeah. and you've got yeah. it and it didn't cost you a penny and it's there so well, I'm still waiting to visit yeah. my Mrs Mills piano oh well indeed so yeah. might get there one day I've got um, uh, who was it Propellerhead or who are now known as Reason Studio they released they mm. got the license for that didn't they early on and I've got that as part of a Reason refill and then they lost the license and who got that after who did the was it was it Native Instruments that did the Mrs Mills the, the whole Abbey Road stuff there was the Mrs. Mills piano. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, there was, there was a Mrs. The... Mills piano in that, wasn't there? Yeah. So, yes. But anyway, there you go. Um, it's free, and it's from Labs, and it's out now. Uh, all you got to do is just go to the, the Spitfire Labs. It's labs.spitfireaudio.com. I'm sure the link has been posted in the chat already. Uh, if not, it will be in the description below, and you can download that and all the others uh, completely free of charge, um, should you so wish. Now, we mentioned a few weeks ago that IK Multimedia were going to launch something that involved AI machine modeling. They didn't say exactly what, and they didn't say what, you know, what it was going to be, how it was going to work, or how much it was going to cost, but they have now. Uh, it has been launched, and it's this. It's Amplitude Tone X. Experience tone like never before. Um, the the principle of this, and it it's kind of it builds into their whole Amplitude ecosystem, is that it allows you through their Wizzy technology to capture your effects rig, whether it's a guitar effects rig or anything. It doesn't. I mean, it's it's aimed at guitarists um, primarily, but. The software allows you to play a specific set of or single uh, predefined tone or series of tones through your rig that is then analyzed by the software and then it creates a version of that in a you know, modeled version of that so you can now take your hardware and model it and throw it into your software and it's there at the touch of a button that's the that's the premise um, it's a standalone app or it works as a plugin uh, or as an extension in the Amplitude software. It works for Mac and PC. It also works on iOS. So whether it's an iPad or an iPhone, you can model your rig into this system and you don't need anything else other than the software to do this. And of course, you know, your computer or tablet or phone with an audio interface. But they have uh, launched a new uh, audio interface called Tonex Capture. What this is not essential, um, but it just kind of make, you know it's, makes it the process easy. It's a dedicated module for this particular purpose. Um, and then I guess you can create as many models as you like and exchange them around. I think there is an exchange facility in, within Amplitude, so users can share your tone models using the ToneNet uh, integration. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, from a synthesizer user perspective, I know that you know most of us have probably got at least one or two effects. Wouldn't it be nice if we could create a whole bunch of effect settings, model them, and then just dump them as a plugin and use them in that way? I don't know. Uh, would would this be something you might use, Mel? I mean, yeah, totally. I mean, I, first of all, I thought the video was great, spectacular. In fact, it sounded really good, and mm. it's very much. I mean, I've got, I've, I've. I'm not a guitar player, but I've got some good guitars. There's a subtle difference in actually being able to play it well enough to call yourself a player. But <laughs> I do play on on my own tracks, and I, and I cut it up and you know do all kinds of things with it. But that led me um, to buying a Kemper Profiler, which is a similar mm. 
thing. I mean, it, it, it's an ant profile. I'm not sure everybody's familiar with it. And it's incredible. But you know what? I don't know a single person that has actually ever profiled any anything. You just download stuff or buy packages. Mm. And I'm pretty sure this will go the same way. But weirdly enough, I've, I've also got pedals, which I use, which I've been using for years, particularly with the um, synth thing. It's, it's yeah. just fabulous. You know, it, it's like a guitar. Yeah. It's, it's a real hands-on machine for anybody that's ever used one. You know, it's a single instrument in a box, and you just play around with it. And it's and it reacts really well, you know, with guitar pedals. I also got, um, if you think of moving the Kemper on, because I recently, or about a year ago, I got um, the Axe Effects, which is far more effects based. It's amp and effects, but the Kemper's probably more swayed towards the amp side of things. The, mm. To my ears, anyway, the Axe Effects is more to do with the stomp boxes, although it obviously does the amps. But uh, no, I think this is really, really. Interesting. The only thing I'd say is I have guitar because that's also part of the yeah. that's the native instruments package, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I have that, and I hardly ever use it because I like these things that I can. Because when I go into that world, it, it's quite a physical world. You know, it's, it's a hands-on world, and when I say physical, I mean it's mean I'm not reaching for my tracker pad and staring at the screen. I, I'm going off from here and, and doing something, and I, I like the fact that effects pedals make you think a little bit differently which is a phrase mm. that I use all the time Kemper does the same thing Axe Effects does the same thing I, 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 I don't know about this but um, I do think it's impressive I think it sounds really good and I even went as far as checking the price out and it, it's pretty reasonable as well yeah and if you look at the the pricing here so mm, um, there right? are four different packages there's the Tonex mm -hmm. SE uh, where you get a couple of hundred tone models included, 20 amps, 10 pedals, yeah. unlimited model creation and unlimited model download for 100 quid or 100 euros. And then the standard version, which just kind of uh, ups the level of models and amps and pedals for 150. Then there's the Max, which, uh, again, ups the, the numbers for 250. And then there's the Capture um, setup, which is uh, the tone modeling and the reamplification um, so pretty pretty nice little prices there and i'd be interested i mean i haven't got this yet i, I want to give it a go um so i'm going to speak to my my friends at ik and see if they can sort of let me have a play around with one but yeah the the principle is just dead simple you know you you, you play this kind of predefined tone that uh, that ik supply you with and you play it through your rig and it through some you know magic in the cloud it comes back and and gives you your model um which is very you know has been done before but i think a much higher price point um kent any thoughts on this one i know you've got a guitar in the background there but i don't know how much you play uh, no for me this is a fish with a bicycle it, okay yeah <laughs> it, um, i haven't got a rig so fair enough yeah yeah i i do not require it fair enough the other Please. thing, what, yeah. one last word here. I've just, I've just realised. Of course, you know, you, you don't have to play your tone through defined, acceptable pedals, do you? Mm. You can play your tone through this kind of nonsense. Oh, anything, yeah. As long as it and goes you know, into the input and, and and the whole thing. So you could actually create an entirely unique set of sounds, as opposed to you know. And I'm, I'm not saying that you know. Putting your fast pedal through your chorus pedal in your echo it, it is, is not a unique thing because obviously it's yours. But mm. it's far more than just as they're marketing it. You yeah. know, it, at, right now it's marketed as strong boxes and ants. It could actually be the gateway to far more than that. Yeah. Which, could be, which could be exciting. Yeah. I'm quite excited now. Yeah, no. Uh, as soon as I saw this, I yeah, I saw that it was being pitched at the guitarist, and that's an obvious choice. Yeah. Um, but I was thinking, what could I actually feed something through? Yeah. Take that output, put it in, and see what I can come up with. It. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think yeah that this could actually turn into something a lot bigger. And, and knowing IK, they they will exploit as much as they can to to get you know as many people on board as possible. So um, yeah, an interesting, an interesting thing. Um, and it's, uh, it's worth pointing out because I was speaking to Tim Dorney um, from Republica the other day who said, oh, have I got to buy another piece of hardware? No, you don't have to buy that input device. That's just like, you know, uh, 
their kind of custom version of an audio interface that you can use with this. This is just software and you don't need their box and yeah, who knows. It's um, it's pretty reasonably priced and it is available. Um, I think it is, no, it says coming soon. It's going to be very, very close. I actually bumped into Paul from IK Multimedia when I was in the Roland store the other week in Denmark Street, um, which is a fantastic little place you must go and visit. Um, and he, he took me to one side and got his, his th got his thing out, uh, he got his folder out and showed me showed me pictures um, of this stuff. And he said, um, yeah, this is coming out in, in, a, in a few weeks' time and it's really, really good and we're getting lots of great feedback. So fingers crossed. Um, there you go. Uh, Sass has put the, uh, the link in the chat for us, so thank you very much. Um, I just want to go back to the DX1 because I can't stay away <laughs> from it too long. <laughs> Um, but our friend Ben over at Musings, and if you haven't been to the Musings uh, website, it's brilliant. Bookmark it, support it as much as you can, because Ben is scanning in as many of these old uh, classic music magazines as he can and uh, just presenting them brilliantly on his website. But Ben says that he pr uh, posted a link to this on his channel. Um, it's from an, uh, an E&MM review. It's actually a prototype DX1 which is interesting um, because I say they only ever made 140 commercial ones. And there is another prototype which nobody ever seems to have seen apart from this very grainy picture. Uh, and it was called the CSDX. CS obviously taken from its previous lines of synths. And it looked very, very similar. It actually had a little lift up panel, a bit like the CS80. Uh, but there you go. It's a prototype. That's why it looks a little bit different. So I'm, I'm going to need to investigate that and find out where if that's in their la synth space it must be got to be there you go thank you very much for that ben much appreciated this is what i like uh, an interactive chat room that feeds us uh, extra information um oh actually no ben's put it on um off the process network facebook page so the link is there um but yes if you want to go to musings there it is musings.co.uk for all your vintage electronic music magazines right there it's a brilliant site absolutely fantastic right uh we're rattling through stuff here uh what should we do next oh yeah let's do some sad news because we, you know, we've got to balance things out a little bit um so i'm i've got really no not much skin in this game um so i will hope that other people have um <laughs> let me just find the correct link to share uh where's it gone where's it gone oh here we go um important news as they say um so oh hang on a minute before we cut to this we've got a surprise guest hang on hey up hello Good how you me. doing can you hear my mother <laughs> <laughs> i'm uh backstage at the gig Yay! Getting ready to go on. Oons on at the minute. They're, they're really good. How's, That's how's Mark... things going on the show? Yeah, very well. Is that Oon is Mark Radcliffe's band, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. The re... It's not like a joke thing, though. It's like serious. It's oh. it, it's really good electronic music, actually. I have to check yeah. those out. So, how's it going? It's going very well. Yeah, yeah. we've we've done a, we've done our sound check, and uh, Oons actually started the set. We're on for an hour. And then Heaven Seventeen are on amateurs. Uh, amateurs. God knows how long they're in the pub <laughs> at the minute. They're not even. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about. How is Martin? Is he well? Yeah, yeah, he's really well. He he remembered us all and uh, sent everybody his his best wishes and good, good. Nice. He's got this mi uh, mini cog. Oh my oh, god! Yeah. I didn't realise they sounded like that. It's like nearly nearly knocked me over the bass end on it when it came through the rig. It was fantastic. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's really good. I can't stay long because I wanna I wanna catch some of his sets. So yeah, no, absolutely. I, I just thought I'd, I'd show me face. What's know. what's your stage time tonight, mate? Uh, we're on at half eight. Okay, so, so a little while. Um, yeah. We're doing an hour. And, nice. And hopefully, I won't be too drunk to do it. Yeah, yeah. Watch it. Do you know what happens <laughs> yeah. there? Yeah, it'd be fine. Is yeah. the Vixter <laughs> with you? Sorry. Is Vixter with you? Yes, yes. She's just passed me this. Oh, um, very nice. Hello, Vicky. Yeah, uh, and and Phil's with me as well. Oh, hey, up, Phil! The oh, they're all here. All yeah, the gang's all here. Look at that, Electromantics in the house. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey! Good Robbie. luck, lads. Have a great night tonight. <laughs> there we go. Knock them dead. Knock them dead. Obviously, we've got the biggest dress dressing room 
Of course. Evan Trentina should in a corner somewhere. This is the... <laughs> This is the oh, steady. <laughs> this is the luxury section here. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And it's all in aid of charity, isn't it? Sorry? It's all in aid of charity? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I think it's for breast cancer. Breast cancer charity, yeah. Kim, who's a, a, a DJ on Radio North, which she, she's recovered from it, so mm-hmm. she's trying to give something back, you know, as, as you do. Excellent. Yeah, because they do this, like, was it once a year? Uh, probably, yeah. This yeah. is the first time it ever happened. But did you know that uh, Northwich Plaza, where we're playing mm. tonight, was Heaven 17's first ever gig? That's right. It was. I didn't know that. I'm yeah, yeah. Surprised. Yeah, yeah. their first ever live gig was there, right there on yeah, that stage. Yeah. Mm. Awesome stuff. Listen, yeah, Ben, I won't keep you, mate, because I know you want to go and check out the, the yeah. set before you go on. Fantastic. I, I wanted to say to Mel, Mel, Hello. what happened about the uh, A-frame? gonna happen <laughs> are you okay though are you well yeah I, absolutely i'm fine and it's all in pieces in my daughter's bedroom because she's not actually with us at the moment all oh, right yeah so yeah so i, I need to get it out I'm, yeah I'm yeah about <laughs> no worries we've just turned up you've got other things to think about <laughs> yeah we, we will be in touch hello ken so you all right i'm all right darling how are you yeah i'm good yeah yeah, no. enjoying it. It's uh, it's one of them great nights for us, you know. It's, uh, it's uh, a so who's on one. stage playing the Hammond organ? You know what? It's a guitar. What? That's a guitar. That that's wow. Mark Radcliffe so we... playing that riff on a guitar. Uh, it's obviously a synth guitar of some description, but I don't I don't really wow. bother with that side of the dark side, so <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to get Mark and his uh, musical partner on the show. I, I think they'd, they'd love to do yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Get the great guys are really get nice. Get them booked. Get them booked. Yeah. Get, get they... Martin rebooked. And is it yeah. Francesca? The, uh, the, the lady... new keyboard player? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I've only kind of bumped into her briefly, uh, but she seems to be French. We, so we won't hold that against her. She speaks English, I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. If she can understand Glenn and Martin, she must be able to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fine. Cool. Well, yeah, get get booking. Have a fantastic gig. Everyone's in the chat rooms wishing you well and saying yeah. break a leg and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so have a fantastic thanks, night, guys. mate. Have all a good right, And good. we'll see you back here next week. Yeah, yeah. Look forward to it. Nice one. Have a good night. See, see you. Bye. Yeah. See you later, <laughs> Take bye. care, mate. Yeah, see you later. One. And he's gone. There he goes. Um, Ben Simpson there, live from Northwich Plaza. There you go. Yeah. Um, Say it again, sorry. My first suit was a cool 700. It was, it was, I didn't own one, but it was the first one that ever, I ever played with was a 700. Um, And I loved them. And I'm glad, I'm glad I've got a software version now. I'd love the the hardware again one day. Um, But there you go. So if, if you uh, want fancy good night out, I don't know if there's any tickets left. It's Northwich Plaza. It's all in aid of a very good cause. Um, Oon, which is Mark Radcliffe's band. And if you're not sure who Mark Radcliffe is, he's a very famous, um, well, He's a DJ and a musician, but also he was um, one of John Peel's producers for the Peel Sessions many years ago, back in the day. He would be the guy behind the desk recording the bands for John Peel Sessions. Uh, and he's overcome cancer himself, uh, thankfully, and he's back on the airwaves. He's an absolute legend. So, um, yeah, go and check that out and look uh, for videos on Facebook. We'll, we'll have Ben back uh, next week to tell us all about it. Right, let's get back to our sad news. Um so let me put this onto the screen. This is WMD have announced that due to external pressures, that is component shortages and costs and everything that everyone's going through, unfortunately, they have become the next in what is an increasingly long line of um, smaller manufacturers just ending trading because they just cannot get the parts they cannot you know keep paying people um they just can't carry on and it's really really sad what they have done is they've announced three new products which we'll have a look at in just a minute which will probably be the last things that they put out there's going to be 600 of each of these modules um and the lead times are around three to ten weeks according to the website but yet another manufacturer going up the swanee um because of you know this economic 
disaster that we're all experiencing at the moment. Um, I'm not a modular guy, so I don't know much about these people, what they do and what they what their stuff sounds like. But, of course, we have a modular guy in the house. Do you have any WMD stuff, Mel? No, you... no, I don't. Anyway. In fact, I'm, I'm really late to the whole um, Eurorack game, really. All oh, um, right. I played around with it when I first went to LA in um, 2000. There was a big um, Dokeford system there, you know, uh -huh. which was very much like an old school. You know, there was nothing fancy in it that like like now, you know, like the whole Eurorack thing is incredible. The, 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 the range of ideas is, is absolutely fabulous. Um, but I, I don't know why I sort of avoided it, you know. Mm. I really wanted to get in, I said before, I really wanted to get into this shared system, this maintenance system. And, I, you know, they're like everybody, they're struggling with parts and getting hold of things. I eventually got one, but it took a long time. And I said, I'm just going to keep it to this system. I'm going to keep it to this system. I'm not going to get stuck in the whole Eurorack thing. And I don't have to, actually, honestly, I don't have the physical space for it. But I'm actually true to my word, apart from the fact that. I'm, another make noise case arrived yesterday but it's an empty one you see right stuff in it so i have started to look about and it's it's a fascinating world it's a fabulous world there's some mm. great stuff in it and i funny enough i was looking at um wmd two or three days ago and it, you know really inventive stuff it looked well built it's black i like the fact it's black and, <laughs> and uh that's really important to me and um really sad really really sad yeah. um kind of surprising too in a in a sense but uh, yeah maybe, maybe not i mean they you know all, i mean they 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 all struck me as possibly one of the largest companies because they, they've got quite a range yeah and, uh, according to x more difficult you know? x101 in the chat uh was just saying that um they they do all their in-house sorry they do all their manufacturing in-house and produce modules for other Eurorack companies as well. Oh, so right. they're not just a piddly little one or two man yeah, yeah. operation. Um, they've clearly got some some stuff mm. going on there. And it's, I guess this is the thing that we're, the whole Eurorack world, which I say I, I, I'm not into it at all, but it, what it does seem to have done is create lots and lots and lots and lots of little companies doing very niche little things, yeah. uh, which yeah. when, when they're available, um, they're fantastic but of course when those components start to dry up or you know not just double or quadruple but sometimes you know 20 times more expensive than they were when they initially yeah. started making this stuff all of a sudden it becomes completely unviable and if they if if they've based this as a you know create this as an ongoing business rather than just a hobby then mm. all of a sudden your whole business model is is gone and it's not just you know it's not just uh you know eurorack it's every you know it's, it's happening everywhere um yeah. so it's just it's a real shame i mean obviously there are people and employees involved in this so there's a real human element to a company shutting down that there's a whole bunch of people that are going to be out of work and yeah. uh wmd say on their website that they they don't want to say goodbye more like a see you later um and maybe that's just you know that's just what it is. Uh, Kent, have you got any thoughts on, on this at all? You're going to see more of this. Yeah. A lot more of this. Um, it's not just the price of the parts. See, the smaller companies are further down the food chain. Mm. Um, the big companies are going to get all the um, components first. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to fill the, the larger orders. I mean, why wouldn't they? Yeah. So the smaller company is going to have to wait longer and longer and longer and longer. Um, availability is pushing up the prices of everything. I've, I've seen a good 50% increase in the price of parts here in four weeks. Mm. Four weeks. You know, yeah. I think the things doubled and it's like. So, and you know, and I'm at the end of that food chain along with with all the others. So, yeah, it's, it's going to get, yeah, we're going to see other, other, uh, little companies get squished yeah um, which is kind of counterproductive in a way where because people are going to go well but I don't know whether I should buy one of them they could be gone tomorrow mm. but they need you to buy it to exactly. stay and you know this vicious cycle will build up and yeah you'll see a lot of companies go down the toilet because of it yeah yeah it's not good and like you say I mean it's it's not just 
in this industry i mean you think about the vinyl industry which is something i'm i'm sort of i keep my ear close to the ground on small artists small labels are unable to get their stuff made because the bigger manufacturers uh, they can go and say well we want a hundred thousand copies of this or fifty thousand copies of that whereas a small band i mean i'm speaking with uh math and and, and terror from my speak machine the other day and they they've constantly had to put their vinyl pressing of their of their latest album back because the pressing plants just phone them up and say sorry mate we've had to put you back four weeks and when when they ask it's they don't always you know they're not always told what it is but it's basically universal have come in and said that oh we, we want fifty thousand of this and that's just it makes more financial sense for the pressing plant to do that and yeah. screw over the little guy and that's it's just happening yeah. everywhere and it's a and real it will always be the little guy to get screwed and it will yeah, yeah it will um but it's a big big shame um these are the three modules over there that are uh, being made now these are the fi final products from wmd subway legion and orion and they are going to be made in uh limited runs of 600 each so if you want those get in there quick um i doubt very much that you know selling all of those will keep the company afloat but it will certainly give them some encouragement so if you were thinking about buying some of this stuff now is probably the time to do it but uh, another sad piece of news from the synthesizer manufacturing world, and I don't think it's going to be the last, no, unfortunately. Not. As you say, it's um, very sad news indeed, but there you go. Right, let's move on to something a little bit more light-hearted. Um, this, I've, I've been having a lot of fun with this. It took a little while to get going. Um, let me just get the right link up here. This is a piece of um, open source or free software, should I say, um, and it's it's got a very interesting name. Um, let's play you a little demo video of this, uh, first of all. Um, it's called Oi Grandad, um, and it's a synthesizer plugin, granular synthesizer plugin. Um, have a listen to this. So you kind of get the idea, it's this very granular um, sample based synthesizer and essentially, um, let me see if I can bring up that screen again, um, so this is an intro, this, yeah here you go, so essentially what you've got is you, you've got four of these granular units and you can load up four samples, one in each, and then mess around with, um, you know, the granular settings of, of this through filters and, and delays and then ultimately you can um, use a whole range of different types of sequences to then sort of play through these uh, samples in their in, in a granular fashion um, it is it's available on github and you can go and get it now it's version 0.7.1 I think is the latest one and it took me about 10 or 15 minutes to make sure that everything was in the right place because it's not a a universal installer that puts everything you have to kind of put the plugins in the plugin folder and the samples in the particular folder that it will then go and reference um but it's uh it's just it's all on github um it is at the moment and I'm, i can hear the groans now it is mac only right now um but there's every chance of a windows version uh, very soon um it's kind of constantly being updated as most things on github are you can see there's you know, within a week they've gone up a, a release, um, so it's 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 well well supported. But um, did uh, Kent, did you get a chance to have a listen to this and maybe play around with it? Or no, not? I didn't. But this has got my name written all over it. Yeah, yeah. I am such a granddad. I'm so into this. <laughs> no, I really like this. I like I like I like machines where you can just you know set up some parameters, walk away, and let it do it. Yeah and then chop out bits that you want or you, or you find interesting i like it yeah it's yeah. um because you can use the sample they provide you a whole bunch of samples if you want and a whole bunch of sequences that you can play in as well yeah. uh, but of course you can just throw in anything that you want 
um, that's yeah. the beauty of a, a sample well, it's based nice to have device. A, you know, to have something that's not trying to sound like something else for a change. Yeah, absolutely. You know? um, once again, I kind of, you know, I don't know, if I'm not being disrespectful here, Mel, but, you know, this sounds to me like this would be something, again, yeah. you said you're not into samples, but, you know, surely I'm this not, is no, a, no, no, no. as an I'm, ambient I'm, designer. No, I'm, I'm not into sample libraries particularly, but things right. like this completely up my stress are like totally yeah. beyond that. Yeah. It's great. I mean, it's really good. The only thing is, is I've got a bit of like a sort of OCD neat freak thing going on here. I, I, I don't allow myself to put things into my system when I'm finishing a project. And I'm a few oh, weeks yeah. later, and I thought, I don't want to, you know, screw this up. But I will definitely get it. And, and it also reminds me of like, you know, Pulsar or something like something mm. to look at. But I think it's brilliant. Do you know who's behind it? Because that name, you know, it's kind of like that. You know, that Sam, what's his name? Sam, well, the, the look, mum, no, no. Oh, computer. Sam Battle, yeah. I love that guy. I love, I'm yeah. really going to visit it one day. And I, it, it kind of, if he did software, this is what he would do, I think. Very you know true, I mean? yeah. That, yeah. That's a good point. He's got, he's no. got his fingerprint all over the the moniker for this guy is modular samples his name is rick that's all i know about oh, him i really should have done a bit more no uh, i, I would definitely definitely doubt, doubt no investigation I, yeah it seems yeah. like safe <laughs> but there's there's not a huge <laughs> amount yeah there's not a huge amount of information about this i mean if you go to the youtube channel let me see if i can do this as I'm talking, I see I'm missing Ben here because Ben normally feels. I'm trying to keep an eye on like the chat and and other bits as well. I'll keep um, on. But um, <laughs> the I'm just going to go to the YouTube channel because there's a bunch of there's, there's just not a lot of information out there. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like a, a more expansive version of um, the audio damage quantum. Yeah, which is yeah. kind of fun. A little bit limiting, but it's fun, you know. I, I often throw samples in there and just see see what happens. You know, like, mm. it, looks, it looks like reactor or something. You know, I, I, I like it a lot. Yeah, and I I mean I really do like granular samples mm. or messing around with samples in a mm -hmm. granular fashion because what you yeah. can find in there at that very minute level yeah. is is fascinating. No, I'm, only this way I'm, I'm trying to finish this track. And I think oh, no, I really need. To. I didn't really want to get into like a groove thing on this particular track, but mm. it really needed a kick, you know, a kick. And I, I went through a few ideas and things like that. Oh, no, no, no. And I've got one of those little leaf audio boxes. Oh, yeah. You know, and I put that into the mortgage. Oh, yeah, that's okay. And then, you know, two minutes later, you, you, you've got a kick that sits with everything else. Yeah. That hasn't existed anywhere else and won't exist anywhere else again, you know, because you've just taken it for that moment. And, I, I love I love that the whole I mean, it's, it's like yeah I'm I'm hot yeah so this is totally the kind of thing that I will spend far too long playing with. yeah I th I think I tell this story every time we have something that's on the show that deals with granular samples but the first time I came across the technique was um, with Motu's Mac Five Three sampler which eventually became Falcon. UVI's Falcon, and they had a demo video where they took the opening uh, sequence of music from Star Wars, you know, that big brass section, and they literally were scrubbing through one grain at a time until they found just this one, this one tiny little grain, and then they started playing it as an instrument almost instantly, and it was just like, this is completely... Complete redefines sampling. It's really spontaneous. Mm. You know, stuff happens so quickly, and you think that you're about to, you know, head off into some journey in, in into the unknown, which you sort of are. But but on on the way, you know, you find you pass all kinds of things. But but yeah, I, I find it an incredibly spontaneous and, and uh, exciting yeah. work. Very rewarding as well. It's, it's... Yeah, and you know, happy activities too. We yeah. Like them, you know? absolutely absolutely well look good luck to the guys or guy from modular samples rick um uh, i don't know how many other people are involved but um go and download that now i think the link has been posted in the chat if not the you go to the youtube channel modular samples and then you can find the video and the link to the github pages in there and it's really it's a very simple process when you download it, you have to put you know the the plugins you put in the various standard plugin folders on a mac and then you have to put the samples folder in the application support folder 
so there's a little bit of manual work there but once it's done it's very rewarding and i've been testing it in logic um for the last few days and it's been stable as anything and uh, a lot of fun so that's good um so there you go modular samples oi grandad which it, it gets it gets you know, my that name is just brilliant yeah because it's completely it's well, fun yeah. isn't it fun yeah it's <laughs> absolutely fun um right let me just i need to do some housekeeping here because i've still got all my tabs open and i can't remember what i have done and what we haven't done um oh there's a bit of tease there's we we like a tease here um let's let's play this tease and then we can we can try maybe playing guess the product um so here we go let's cop a load of this which is a tease from our friends at cherry audio august 18th next week six days from now we will find out what that is um we've been kind of having a guessing game over on the uh, the facebook page as to what this might be um i know what it is but i can't tell you what it is um but it's brilliant and that's all i can say it's really really good and we, we can talk about it more next week but um yeah italian it's also my wedding anniversary on the <gasps> week, so I could maybe download this and give this to my wife as an anniversary present. Absolutely. That's called divorce, I think. I made the mistake <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I made the mistake. Ken will know what I'm going to about. I made this mistake yesterday of having, uh, I was sat outside enjoying the, the mild evening air, talking to uh, our mutual friend Ty Unwin about various bits and bobs and um i started talking about buying synthesizers and forgot that my wife was sat next to me and i'm saying all this stuff and then there's this little thing in my head goes you do realize you jackie's sat right next to you and you've just been talking about spending you know lots of money on, on... and i just looked at her and she's just like looking at me from above her glasses with this glare and I'm like, oh god what have i done um so yeah even talking about it is going to get you divorced no, yeah, I, honestly, her, yeah. It's been 40, 43 years. So 43 years of synthesizer madness. So she must be used to it by now. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got a new synth from Cherry Audio coming. And I can tell you all right now that um, Dan and Mitchell will be coming on the show September 16th um, to talk about this and other things, hopefully. Um, but uh, any any guesses as to what this might be? It's Italian. It certainly sounds analog. Eighties, early eighties. Could be quite large with wood bits on it. Mm. Well, because I've worked on so many of them, and I, I've had to touch in the names, graphics on the back. Mm. It's it's not really what you'd call a teaser. It's more like it's kind of blatantly obvious. Yeah. yeah. You know, really. I think I, I mean, think it might be. They needed to pull that back a lot. <laughs> So this this is aforementioned That's all you get, folks. That is good. That's yeah. all you get, folks. You're not going to play B7 then. No. Did you actually like? I was never a fan of them, to be honest. Is that the right thing? I was always a profit guy. Yeah, that, 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 no, no. I I like that kind of elastic twang they have. Right. I played today, by the way, sideswipe. Um, the profit ten, and I I, I it's really good. The new one. Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Instantly, a couple of things that I that I tried didn't work in the same way that they work as the original profit which is really mm. weird because there are little tricks i used to really oh that doesn't do the same it doesn't work quite the same but it's impressive mm. really yeah. really good and it looks great as well beautiful case and you know it look it's it, yeah it's a proper proper mm. i i had a go on one 
well, Profit 5, um, the Ref 4, next to an OBX 8. And my word, I mean, that, if ever there was a definition of being torn between two amazing sounding instruments, there it was. But there is something about the Profit sound, mm. isn't there? You know what? I actually unwittingly ended up in exactly the same situation. Oh, yeah. And it was Profit, Profit. All the way, all yeah. All the way, yeah. But you yeah. know what? I, I, back in the day, I, I was a profit guy totally. That's a, you know, wasn't, not a big surprise really. But mm. but what, what was a surprise is how you know it just looked great. It was well built. It, it, it sounded proper. Yeah. No, it it it. Yeah. I mean, they're two incredibly well built machines. And mm. if I if I had the choice, I think I would err towards the profit, just mm. simply because so much of what I loved growing up in my teenage years was 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 profit although there was a substantial amount of oberheim in there as well so yeah, yeah unfortunately yeah well you don't uh, hear profits like i hear profits no this is true this is true you, you you put it to your put your profits <laughs> and, and talking of fonts talking, <laughs> but, but talking of fonts uh we just mentioned the font that was kind of displayed there indeed the 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 sequential circuits choice of font. I mean, it just got. There was a conversation between I think me and Ben on the Facebook page about what this instrument might be, and we were kind of referring to the fonts being used. And it just made me think about all the different fonts that were like sequential were great, weren't they? Because mm. sequential circuits, and somebody will I'm sure post the name of the fonts in the chat. But they had that that one font for the name sequential circuits, which is a very futuristic, very eighties font. And yet the prof the, the font for the actual name of the synth Prophet Five was was very uh, flowing and and much older in in sort of style than 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 that. And then you have you know Yamaha with their big block graphics and then the the you know the the lines those horizontal lines appear in so many synthesizer fonts all done in slightly different ways. Yeah. And it just, it just made me think about you know the amount of time that companies spent just just thinking about the fonts on their synthesizers the whole way they named everything you know the fonts that they were using on that to make it appealing is yeah i just yeah, kind of went down a lectone didn't they as john up writing yes it was this kind of juxtaposition of this you mm. know very clean modern yamaha and then electone this flowery sort of yeah. thing going on it's a very important part i think of synthesizer design because obviously these are tactile <laughs> instruments you've got to look at them and use them yeah. and and, and Kind of brings me back to that point I made about FM8 was that I don't like the the fonts and the the you know the, the way it looks on screen, but uh, there you go. We just come. Yeah, I just went went down a small font rabbit hole the other day as one does. Yeah. But there you go. Uh, so there you go. That's Cherry Audio. Uh, I will stop saying there you go. Um, Cherry Audio coming out on August the 18th. So um, go and like and subscribe to their channel to get notified of when the official announcement video um which will come out on that day and i guess it will be available to buy from that day as well whatever it might be i don't know um let's talk meets and uh, events because there's a there's a meeting an event taking place and of course these things are uh, starting to ramp up uh, even more now uh if you are of a modular leaning and you live well, in the UK or maybe close to Leeds, then uh, Ben Divkid, uh, as he goes uh, under the name of, uh, is behind the Modular Meets Leeds 2022 event, which takes place starting in, well, tomorrow. Uh, it's for the weekend, I think, uh, Saturday and Sunday, uh, at the Belgrave Music Hall and Canteen in Leeds. Um, lots of stuff going on there modular-wise. Um, so, yeah there you go anybody in the chat if you're going to that let us know um but uh, modular meets are back on and div kid has got this this one going up there i to be perfectly honest when i go to something like synth fest and you walk around that sort of main hall and it's loads of people with modular stuff and it's a real cacophony it just it makes my head hurt i have to go outside and just like tune myself back in um but hopefully there'll be lots of headphones going around but uh um are you any of you up for going to these sorts of things i, I you know i had tr as you know i had trouble making it up the highway road so well yes he stood me up this one he stood me up 
Sorry, next time, next time. <laughs> but, um, I will actually, but um, it needs to be a Brighton one, doesn't it? Because it's a bit more mine. Yes. I don't, yeah, know, I don't that's know if that's still going. going. Yeah. Great idea. Yeah. And obviously, I'm not going to ask you, Kent. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I might but go it's... there subliminally. Yes. Yeah. Well, you well, that's well, the virtual world. Yeah. Yeah. You you'll, you'll be a, a BS Ken. <laughs> yeah, just... Well, the if... If you are in the uh, the vicinity of the Belgrave Music Hall and Canteen, which sounds is a great name, that isn't it? Uh, in Leeds, uh, it's in the uh, Arena Quarter. Of course, Leeds. We must say Leeds is one of the favourites to uh, host next year's Eurovision. Apparently, because mm -hmm. uh, there are seven cities announced: Leeds, Sheffield, Birmingham, Glasgow, uh, and a couple of others. I can't remember exactly, but uh, Leeds apparently is kind of pushing ahead because of the it, its location in the arena quarter uh which has got loads of hotels and loads of uh, travel links to it so if you are in leeds tomorrow and you'd like a bit of modular go and go and say hi to ben and all of the rest of the participants um and also um there is an emom electronic music uh open mic night in derby uh this coming thursday which is um particularly uh, poignant because the guy organizing our very own jim glue uh, it will be his 50th birthday as well. So um, if you want to go and try your hand out at um, a synthesizer open mic night, go uh, to Emom uh, in Derby. I can't remember the name of the place, is it? Um, Dubrec. Is that the one in Derby? I can't, I'm sure the guys, again, the guys in the chat will let us know. Um, but yeah, you can uh, you can find details of that on Facebook and on our page as well. So there you go. Uh, Modular Me in Leeds. And uh, that is tomorrow and Sunday. Right. Um, there was a couple of things that came up. Um, and we'll, we'll speak to, to Mel a bit about what he's doing in this world at the moment. But um, Keith in Watford, um, who I think I saw in the chat earlier. I think he's around. I hope he's around. Um, he posted something that might take your fancy, uh, Kent. In light of what you're working on downstairs, mm. but I'm not entirely sure that this is legit. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a Yamaha GS1. According to the seller, and I quote, "It is a piano of the only 100 that were manufactured in the whole world." Um, this is the most interesting thing about it. Uh, one pound. Yeah, it's a pound. Uh, I, I, there's no mention of this being, um, you know, make me an offer kind of thing. So if you fancy a GS1 for a pound, and it's in London, well, we've, yeah, we've contacted him. Really? Yep. Whoa. We've, offered, we've offered him fifty-seven thousand pounds for it. So let's see how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you were going around to collect that, you'd have to take an aluminium baseball bat with you. Well, quite. You know? Yeah. yeah. If this is actually the one, the th if he does actually possess this, it doesn't look too shabby. It's got a little chip off the uh, the block at the end there, and uh, one of the keys, one of the ivory veneers seems to have uh, snapped. But it doesn't look too shabby. Mm. I'd give him a quid for it. The one downstairs is better. Yeah, what I'm sure. Sorry? What do they sell for now? I don't know, Kent. What do they normally... Uh, undetermined, because there isn't enough of them. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, can't, I, I can't say how much the one downstairs was bought for, but it, it was it. ridiculously low. Yeah. Really? I'm not, I never really got it. No? No. It would be a wonderful piece of equipment to have if you had the computer with it. You need the programmer, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If you've got that, oh. then suddenly it's like, whoa, dude! You yeah. know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Without it, it's um, it's a very, very well. I think it's about thirty. It's about thirty kilograms heavier than a CS eighty. Gotta be, gotta be. Without the legs on it, which are really, really heavy, solid wood. Um, so it's just a very, very heavy MIDI controller. 
look a bit like those sort of Queen Anne TV cabinets from the 80s. It does, yeah. doesn't it? Mm. But it's it's a very... I'd, I'd love one. I really would, but... Yeah, there it just, is. It's a quid. Well, yeah. I know I might yeah. just nip down this week. Bring a bat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you deliver? Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But there you go. So if if you fancy making an offer for that, let let us know. If you do get hold of it, let us know. Um, mm. If you have your legs broken in the process, don't blame <laughs> yeah, us. Get robbed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Yeah. Oh, but there you go. I, I just thought it was uh, an interesting thing. Um, quite why they've chosen it because normally these kind of scam sales, they'll pick something like a Jupiter Eight or a CS Eighty, mm. not necessarily a GS One. But. Well, yeah, mind you, a lot of eighties are recognisable because when when they do come up, I get phone calls saying, "Yeah, you know that one? Yes, I know that one. Yeah, it's legit." Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know. So I'm assuming you don't know this one. I don't know this one, <laughs> and it's got a telltale chip in the yeah, near. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, there you go. Um, it takes you. You know, take your chance and see what, what you get. Um, one more thing uh, that I just want to bring to people's attention is a, a film uh, that is slowly but surely gathering a little bit of speed in terms of uh, getting out there into the public's uh, eyes and ears. Um, and it's a film about a very, very rare, I think like one, uh, synthesizer called the Sub Harcord. And it was an East German uh, contraption, um, which I, I guess is probably a slightly an in, insulting term to use. It was basically East Germany's attempt at making a, a powerful electronic synthesizer. Now, the documentary uh, is made by Ina Pilat from Norway, and she's been working on this for years, even though it has uh, 2021 by, by this. I've got email correspondence going back with her for some while. Um, it's uh, a brilliant documentary film uh, about this amazing machine, uh, which you can see just here. Wow. I'll just zoom in there. It's this thing on the right. It it just it looks incredible, uh, and it sounds pretty much like nothing else. Very, mm -hmm. a very niche sound. But I want I want to play the trailer because the trailer not only tells you about the film, of course, but it features. Um, a very dear friend of mine who is sadly no longer with us who was my uh my mentor I, I think in terms of getting into the industry uh as i started to do about 20 odd years ago this guy was behind it all and he took me under his wing and we became incredibly good friends and this was one of the last things that he did uh he traveled to germany to sample this instrument and this trailer features him. So I just want to play this trailer for you and I'll tell you why I'm playing this um, after we've seen this. George, that's what you always bring to the show. My Lieblings feel that. The engineers who built the sub cord and designed it came up with something that was totally unique and very different to what the rest of the world were doing. Also waren wir wie verrückt auf diesem Gebiet und nach ein, zwei Jahren hatten wir schon ein Muster und damit begann eine Welle, die nicht mehr aufzuhalten war. Ha! And it was all developed in communist East Germany, and nobody knew about it. Ha! My so. goodness, here it is, my child. Yes. It's your child? 43 you years, 43 years ago. I've not seen it. You saw it last time. My dear child. Hello. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And there you go. Um, it's the sub-hard chord. Um, 
which is this very you know very rare east german contraption that was being built behind the iron curtain um in the 60s 70s and um yeah it was discovered uh, restored and this documentary has been made and steve howell who you saw uh, in his wonderful um uh, tweed suit and jacket sampling the hell out of it i don't know what happened to those samples because it wasn't long after that that unfortunately he um he left us um but what a wonderful thing now the the film is actually being shown um for the first time to kind of like a public audience in hamburg um and then hopefully we hope that it will get a wider release i think it was shown on a very small like RT TV channel somewhere in in Europe uh, but it's slowly kind of gathering pace and hopefully we'll see that but had you ever heard or seen the sub hardcore either of you at all no but I really wish I had yeah it's incredible it's the kind of thing that you dream of having some time to play with mm. one off the ship it, you know you know what's actually really very cool but also like dangerous about it, it looks like it belongs in the control room at Chernobyl right? yeah yeah it's doesn't got, it yeah thing about it and oh yeah remarkable that you know yeah. you listen to those sounds and the, the hairs stand, stand up on, on the eye. there is there is something not, very um eastern european mm -hmm. in that design isn't it I mean, it's just yeah, it's stunning I mean. um but i mean I, i've watched other clips of that ina was very generous and she shared some clips with me um some while ago of of, of steve which i then passed on to his uh his wife and daughter who just you know fell to bits when they saw it because it was just like mm. you know a really emotional thing but um some of the noises it's ma it makes is uh, are just unbearable i mean really unbearable but i guess in a from a sound design perspective these things you know will just be be sheer gold and it literally sounds like nothing else um it's mm. incredible stuff any thoughts on that one keb mm. fact you getting inside on it <laughs> I noticed one one of the circuits in the background briefly it looked like it had divide down mm. on it as well. Um, it's all right. Yeah. Sorry. Oh right. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I I I have no idea how this thing works, what the technology is inside it. Um, but I guess you know maybe the documentary will enlighten us more. Um, but if you are in Hamburg, I don't think it's shown yet or not but uh try and get to see this and um and try and you know uh let's see if we can get this on a wider uh platform because you know stuff like this needs to be seen yeah um, i think this is going so to be rare. the fate of the anaglyph isn't it really <laughs> yeah. well Some let's start making a documentary somewhere. yeah <laughs> oh, come on come on yeah 50 years ago this man had right. this wonderful crazy this idea crazy stupid guy <laughs> You could start. You start making the film now, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Got it. They'll, they'll be using <laughs> clips of the show. Yeah, yeah. Here, here he is. Look, he made. <laughs> um, I would love <laughs> to know what happened. Again. Yeah, <laughs> I'd love to know what happened to the samples that Steve took, um, and whether they, because, uh, as at the time that Steve passed away, he was doing because uh, Steve is behind Hollow Sun. Uh, which was this, um, you know, yeah. this company of his that originated. Well, Hollow Sun Studio was a studio of his that he had back in the eighties that he, he used to um, let people come and record at his place. Yeah. And he was also a tutor at the Gateway School uh, of Music and Recording Technology in Kingston upon Thames, which is I was going to go there in nineteen eighty six, but couldn't afford the two thousand pound course fee because that was a lot of money back then yeah. and it transpired that like 20 odd years later when i when i met steve he said oh i used to be the tutor there and I thought, oh jesus you know, our paths could have crossed so many so many years before um but hollow sun became this thing where he would because he was working for akai at the time and developing their sample libraries and he wanted to increase uh the traction on some of these machines so he set up hollow sun to give away free samples of classic you know, vintage analog and digital synthesizers that snowballed and became the, the kind of the hollow sun uh, uh company that he ran until his passing and he would make these wonderful contact instruments because he eventually you know gave in to software sampling after you know railing against it so much for a long while um 
and started working with a guy called Mario, who is based in Croatia. And Mario is a, a super whiz. And actually, he works for Native Instruments now uh, at, at scripting contact instruments. So he would do all the scripting, and Steve would do the kind of the graphic design and the sample uh, design and, and compilations. And so um, I don't know whether because Mario did try. I think he does still keep the website going, selling what you know products were were being sold back then and trying to keep them as up to date as possible uh, but i don't know if the sub hardcore samples ever made it into anything because of course steve also sampled another machine with cord in its name the the nova cord yeah which is a brilliant sample yeah, if you yeah can get hold i, I of that. can't remember the name of that thing but i i i remember 10 12 years ago sitting down on a late night in a studio you know what going through you you YouTube's with the guy with the scarf on behind you, Ken, and it was eerie listening to it. You know, yeah. again, it was like a ghost of, of, of an instrument from yeah. 50, 40, 50, 60 years ago, and one came up for sale. Yes. Like needed rest, restoration, and um, no, 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 you've got to be pretty brave to take them right now. Well, yeah, I think because the one that Steve sampled, I believe came through uh dana at hideaway studios um and i think she bought it from mark doty i think it was mark's original one had it shipped over and then steve sampled that one and i don't know what happened to that maybe that was the one that was up for sale because there's obviously there's not a lot of them no, around no. and they are incredible i mean that was definitely divide down um you know it was, it was fully polyphonic as they say um it was a, an incredible machine incredible machine um yes as ben points out mario uh is also known as evil dragon on kvr and gear space uh, get the name right there um but yes it's uh uh an interesting movie and hopefully it will get a wider release at some mm -hmm. point talking of other things before i forget if you are in the uk and you can get sky arts this weekend there's a Tangerine Dream documentary. There's a Gary Newman documentary knocking about somewhere. Um, and there's a whole night, I think, tomorrow night on Sky Arts. Of a whole bunch of... Um, I Dream of Wires is on, which is that amazing modular movie that features another friend of mine who passed away. Um, I'm cursing people here. Uh, Mike McGrath, Muff, the, the original Muff Wiggler. Um, he is in that film, along with a whole bunch of other great people. Um so yeah, if you can get Sky Arts, and it is free. Sky Arts is free to you know it's on FreeSat and as well as Sky, of course. Um, there's some great documentaries on there. So yeah, there you go. It's, it's a good one. We, we often scour it. Yeah, it's real good... surprises turn up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's real yeah, little gems. Yeah, I saw the Tangerine Dream thing was on. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah, that, that looks good. I've got, I've got, I've, I've set everything to record because it goes kind of like way into the middle of the night, and I'm just, I'm old. I go to bed at ten. Uh, so, um, yeah, sub hardcore, the future that never happened, uh, mm. is showing in Hamburg. Uh, I think this week or this weekend, um, and let's see if we can get that a wider um, uh, appeal out there anyway look we've got about half an hour left um mel tell us what have you been up to lately because you said you've been decorating your studio and have have you been working on anything you can tell us about yeah i mean mostly what i've been doing is i'm doing this for years i've been writing for um extreme music for oh years, yes years and years doing um production music and it, it seems to be my you know some, the main focus of my life these days i you know i just really enjoy doing it and mm. um, the stuff gets used which is nice and um so it's rewarding in many many ways but yeah i, I just do enjoy doing it and i think particularly the last few few years you know i just i, I, I sort of live and breathe in this room really mm. so it's a super perfect we just had um reverse engineering four which is the fourth in the reverse engineering series out nice extreme and i'm just starting to mix Another project which I'm really excited about because it's it's a you know I've, I've decided that I didn't want to repeat or do things I've done before in in, in, in sense of the work flow you know mm. so I'm still in logic which I love but I'm not using it for sequencing everything I'm doing is sequencing using the um, Rene the make noise Rene and then and I'm chopping stuff up and just chopping things into audio and, and making tracks out of it and. Um, mm. 
it's been really good. It's been been really, really, um, really creative summer. You know, it's been, it's been really good. And, and it's, it's interesting to me because I'm using things that, to be honest, are quite alien to me. You know, I've, 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 I, you, you, you mentioned the rolling shop in Denmark Street. Yes. And I, was, I heard about that. Oh, God. It, I, I was demonstrating the system 700s in, in, in Denmark Street, like 40, almost, you know, yeah, a long time ago. A yeah, long you, time ago. you worked but at Ride Argent's place, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, you know, that stuff is still exciting to me and it's still kind of ingrained in what... In, in what I do, but I, I felt I got to the point where I really needed a new challenge. You know, I, I really needed to throw everything up in the air and see and see what happens. So I I had a shared system and uh, Strager and a few other bits on order for ages, and they finally turned up. I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to be really really restrict myself to those mm. um, instruments, which is uh, what I what I what I've done really. So I'm really excited by. By, by that, uh, I think what else has happened? I, I won an award. That was exciting. Oh yes. Um, 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 music and sound thing, and I, I've had some ASCAP things as well. But uh, but this was for um, uh, Netflix for uh, the Drive to Survive. Yeah. And I've got quite a bit of my stuff in, in, in stuff, which is really good for me because I'm a total petrol head as well. well I was going to say because that's perfect, isn't it? You know, that's I mean, the ideal gig, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is really, isn't it? So that that's it, really. You know, um, yeah. I'm still, you know, keeping my hand in with other with other things, but I suppose my focus for years now has, has, has been, you know, turning out um, quality product for mm, absolutely. So the good people of Extreme, which gave me a huge amount of freedom, a really enormous amount of um, freedom. So you know, yeah. they're, they're not really afraid to take chances or uh, you know. yeah. So and- they- sort of my world currently in terms of because obviously your backdrop is is one of the most impressive backdrops that i think we've had on the show with a massive uh moog modular behind you there no the one no, that, no. the one that oh yes yeah, sorry because the one on the left is as well i say to, to over your right shoulder that's a moog isn't it that one yeah this one it's a backwards, isn't it that's a that's a mode. Yeah. We see that is the PPG 300 series. Yeah, bloody That's, PPG. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. That is some moon modular stuff. It's all kind of functional stuff. It's all uh, routing and attenuators and midi to Right. Like, yeah. like that. Yeah. that. I'm getting the hang of this. There you go. That is, that's the reissue 15. Yeah, I was going to say that's the 15. Really isn't good. It? I mean, it's really, really, really good. It's just like, it's kind of like the old, it's very, very, very close, except the pots don't go and the jacks don't go. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I'm going to stick my neck out and say underneath that, obviously, there's the big blue thing which we all know is a PPG yeah, yeah. wave. Yeah. But is that um is that a PPG on top of it? Yeah, it's the PPG 1020, <sighs> which is the digital oscillator version, oh. and it's cool. It's really interesting. I bought that a few years ago on Vimeo. As a bit of a punk because I'm, I really am a bit, um, I am a, 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 a Wolfgang fan, or a Wolfgang Palm fanboy. Yeah. Really and I wasn't sure what to make of it because I had the Sonic Carrier, which is the super rare pro, programmable thing, and it, you know, it was such a, a ball like to get it working. When it was working, honestly, you know, I didn't, I didn't really gel with it, so I, I got rid of it. Um, for a lot more than I paid for it, but not anything <laughs> like what it cost me. You know, I mean, it cost me a fortune trying to get people to fix it and you know, look at it. So, and that that came up, I think, in the same auction. So I bought that, and it, it's, you know, at the time, a lot of people said it's like Wolfgang Palm's mini mode, and it's so different from her. Right. It really is, but it's got its own character. It really has. It's quite a unique little thing, and. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan. Big yeah. fan. Of and, and I know there's a there's a wave knockoff coming out, isn't it? But there's also a really interesting one. Um, you know, well, I, suppose. I was I was going to say that it's called the the third wave from Groove Synthesis. Yeah, that looks great. That looks great. Yeah, I was going to say. I mean, that's actually a. Um, oh, I've lost it now. I've lost <laughs> it. That's a uh, wave two, so it's a really early one. 
it's, oh right so it's, yeah two yeah. So it's got different ships and it sounds very different from the 2.2 and 2.3 mm. and that game was a bit of a punt it was like because you know, i was offered two at the same time and i had to choose one or or the other and um a lot of people saying oh you should try it too you know? and, and on paper it's a lot less you know than, than you know in terms of what it can do than the in the uh, later models, but you know, it, it has a unique sound. Yeah, you know, and I, 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 I do use it all. I, I do use it all. Part of the reason for rejigging the studio was like I had better access to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just going to be. I'm changing plumbing mixes and stuff like that currently. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. I've got a need that I really want, and I'm looking at the thermionic. Okay. Bastards. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've heard good, good things about it. I, I thought, you know, if you're going to put something mix in the chain, I quite fancy something that's going to a little bit, bring a little mm. bit more to the to the table. Yeah. You know, now I, I don't know whether you know there's their valve based things. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you push them a little bit, you know, things, things will yeah. happen. You work. Expect you know, maybe didn't even want it in the first place, but they are. Well, I think one of them is purple, so. All right, mm -hmm. very nice. But so I, is it? Well, that's that's sort of thing. Is there anything on your shopping list? Anything you would like that's that's kind of new and exciting? Well, um, yeah. I mean, as we talked about Eurorack, right? and I and I've really been still not getting into Eurorack as as a, as a as a wall system. You know, mm. I really like instruments. You know, that's what I like, and that's what I love about the ENS synthy is as an instrument, it works to together you know and, and if you had it as individual oscillators and filters and trapezoids it, it wouldn't be the same thing and that's what i love about the shared system it, it is a complete instrument that it's, it's all the same mindset you know it's all mm. the same dna but what i decided to do was expand that so i got an empty case a uh, make noise empty case actually arrived this week and I'm going to put, you know, I'm going to fill that over over the next few months, but with, you know, really hopefully well chosen things that complement that. Mm. A few other make noise models in the QPass filter in in the shared system, but it's a really cool filter, stereo filter. They just bought a stereo oscillator out. I think it's, I can't remember what it's called. Is it the DPL or something? So I'm going to go for that. But all this stuff is on back order as well, you know, and, yeah. and it, 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 everything is late now, so you, you've got to be really patient. But it's sort of, you know, it drip feeds the budget. That's, how it <laughs> That's it, really. Um, I like the profit today. I was really impressed with that. I can't yeah. see people buying one. I, I don't really need it, you know. And in fact, I'm I'm selling a um, um, profit twelve because I haven't used it for ages. All oh, right. And I, I do have this kind of like, you know, if I haven't used it in twelve months or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 Pack yeah. your bag and go. <laughs> if that was my case, I'd probably sell pretty much everything that's in this room. Uh, but so there's a lot of stuff going out, actually, a lot of effects pedals and stuff. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, <laughs> bargain. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, you know, stuff like 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 that. But I I don't know. I've never been. I know it might seem a bit sort of contradictory looking at the back wall, but I've never been one for. for, for I've never been a collector. You know, mm. I bought stuff because I really found it found a found a use for them, you know. Mm -hmm. Um and that that's always been you know, but everything has to earn its keep and, and, and yeah. kinda of, and converse has to has to feel wanted and needed and loved, you know. I mean that actually in a sort of twisted hippie kind of way. I like I like <laughs> my instruments feel like they're actually, you know, here and yeah doing stuff, not just collecting yeah. stuff and, and um you know, just <laughs> You know, they're, they're not kind of yeah. trophies or anything. anything. No, no, they're, exactly. Yeah, they're they're not decorations, be, yeah. Be used, yeah, proper. yeah. And they, they really should be, you know, they really should be. Yeah. Where, where do you sell your kit when you sell oh, it? But... Oh, God help me. Um, I, I've sold a few bits in Vimeo from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe a bit through there. Depends. Depends what it is. If it's if it's stuff like guitar pedals, I mean, nobody wants to buy guitar pedals, do they? There's such an individual thing that you that yeah. you go, and, you know. So I don't. I don't know. I, I I I'm actually just talking to a friend about doing a like just a big part X into a story, you know, Brian. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. 
fine for me because look, I'll 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 get rid of it and I'll plow it back into something else like some summing mixes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it actually leaves, you know, because everything's got long throw runs now. Yeah. So you know, when I, all, all these little leaves that are actually clogging up my bathroom right right now, <laughs> completely hopeless. <laughs> yeah, I was going th- I was going through my garage the other the other yeah. week and I've got these. Um, Robin Scott very generously gave me all of his old patch bays from his studio that he just you know just he tore it all down. They're all handmade, and they've got massive cable runs to go you know around a proper you know professional. And I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of this stuff. And my wife was going, "What do you want all these cables for?" Like, because I'm typical. I've got boxes of cables because you never know when you might need it. And I've got all this oh, stuff, you know. and it's just cables. I'm thinking, God, it takes up so much space. I've got a solution though, because because when we we de- we had the whole place or we we um, decorated in the bathroom, we put the, this is bathroom channel now. Right? <laughs> we, we put these pull out wicker baskets. You can put towels in and stuff. More yeah. towels, more stuff. They're all neatly labelled now. They're midi leaves. They're audio leaves. They're computer leaves. They're made. <laughs> It's just chocker. Well, yeah. the I was in there like half an hour before this show, like <laughs> tripping over stuff. And all, is that gonna yeah. yeah. But yeah. Oh, it, it's just, it's just happens, isn't it? But I can, I, you know, I was on the lookout for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Def- definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, I mean, I really do mean it about the Eurorack thing. I mean, you know, I don't, <laughs> just don't want to get into too deep because I can yeah. see the time and I can see the amount of effort and love that people put into those systems, but they are your whole world. And I, I can't let it turn in, turn into that. Otherwise I'll, you know, I'll, I'll spend all year not twiddling and won't make any, any uh, music. With the shared system is very handleable. You know, it's just tiny, very small, you know, for, for the power in that system. Mm. I would recommend it to anybody. Yeah. Well, I think like uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't get into to Eurorack because it probably would be a, a money pit um, mm. that you just kind of and and I have other issues with cables and and space yeah. and stuff. So I don't know. I'm, I've I've resisted th- this far. And I'm I'm confident that I will continue to resist, but maybe That's one day. <laughs> but it is like the synthesized version of crack, isn't it? Yeah. So- well, yeah. it's Euro crack, isn't it? That's what Euro crack. Yeah. yeah, no. Well, I think, you tried it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but, I um, want, one of my plans is to to get all of this out of here into a a, a specific space and, as a studio, as a working kind of studio, and then let yeah. other people come in and use it and charge them for the pleasure. But um, and if I find a place big enough and there's a wall or an area that has a gap and I can't think what to f- put in it, I know that I will probably start going down that road yeah, um, yeah. well that happens isn't it that's yeah what happens. But I, I like physical things that i can mess around with i'm looking yeah. at a lyra here have you seen the lyra yes i yes. love that and you know it, it's right there it's sitting right to the left of my monitor mm-hmm. and you know it's just one of those things that when i need to fill a gap i need to oh, you just clock up it's there and you just touch it and you play it and you twiddle it and something happens that mm. will not happen in any other way, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a purist. I've said that many times, and, and I've got loads of VSTs and, and you know, I do shit ton of stuff. Oh, I swore, damn it, I knew it's gonna happen. No, nah, don't worry about it. And you know, I, I do lots of stuff within Logic, but I do like, I do, I, I love the hands-on things. You know, I, mm. I love the tactile things. I like the design of things too. You know. Yeah, you were saying about about the uh, profit earlier, it's a beautiful thing to look at. Yes, yeah, you know, it's a great thing to own. I haven't owned one in thirty five, forty years, but it's a great thing to own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was reading somewhere yesterday uh, about future classics uh, and uh, what people think. You know, what synthesizers of today or the last five or ten <laughs> years are going to be future classics, and the the, the thing you've just mentioned was. Uh, struck me is that those th- instruments that we consider classics today like the prophet five like the oberheims 
they weren't just great sounding synthesizers they were great looking synthesizers not just pretty to look at but yeah. functional and easy to understand and that's why i think those are classics because you can look at it and it's it's visually appealing but yeah. it's also it draws you in because you can see exactly what you're doing whereas a lot of stuff nowadays is overly complicated or or not complicated enough i don't know well, it's, it's you know tons of hidden menus mm. oh and yeah I hate that. you know i really hate that um I do, I, I do like to see things but i mean you know, going back to the to the profit i mean it could only have been made in the states it could only it can only have been like a yeah. you know, post california thing in the same way that uh you know ppg yeah you know where that came from you know? yeah exactly you absolutely know there's a real cultural thing and yes. um yeah i i think those you know those have to be the classic i'm constantly su surprised you know shockingly surprised at the price that things go go for you know cs80s I and mean, dx1s things mm. like that and I have to say, I'm not a fan of either. Really. They're just not my sort of thing. I mean, I love Van Gaelis, and I love, or I love Blade Runner. Anyway. But, <laughs> um, but, but the rest of it, you know, it didn't really grab me. It wasn't stuff that I was listening to. I was listening mm. to, you know, Tangerine Dream, and Craftwork, and um, you know, people like like that. I still remember a lot of Kraut rock stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I, you know, the, the prices are crazy, absolutely mm. crazy. Seven hundred, you know, what, one hundred and twenty grand are they now? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's yeah, a little it's more bumpy. now. Really? Sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 There, there's one privately sold for 180 um, <laughs> about eight weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Why? And it wasn't even wasn't even restored by me. I mean, <laughs> so what? Oh. Well, so would you want to make it? You fix it, mate. Right? <laughs> yeah. It would have been in tune. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, by the way, is the three C still in tune across five octaves? Yeah, it's really good. It, it's oh. a bit crunchy, ridiculous. I mean, Ed Buller, of no fame and various other things, he swears to God that it's been modified and had some sort of dark arts done. So I said, no, it's basically just been you. You worked on it and look magic it up, and it's so in tune. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's your dark arts Ooh, right there. Just, just, yeah, just, just really needed. Good. Yeah, just needed no. setting up. Probably. It does actually need a little bit of TLC right, right now. That's I must admit, even I was surprised when it did it as well. <laughs> <laughs> Press the top C and go, bloody hell. There's something wrong with that. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Like, it's like a real tone inside it or something. I had to check to see if it still said Moog on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it don't, don't, you know, don't, don't, don't worry about it. Other stuff doesn't work. Well, what about yeah. those PPG sequences? Are they love still them. going? Yeah, I love those sequences. They're love. still working. Yeah, and the analog switches, the sequential switches are brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Have you seen all the... There's a guy selling a bunch of uh, XP Bauman and X Edgar Froze, um project electronic stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, this is on reverb, and it's dropped, boys and girls. It's dropped from a mere 80,000 down to... I think, it's, I think he's asking 35 grand for it. Jeez. Yeah, it's only one. It's quite a reasonable cabinet, my right? God. But that's full of of all the. It, that's custom made sequences that were built for um, uh, Dream, up in the Ring Moss and stuff mm. like that. I think Wolfgang Palmer had his phone. I, I yeah. Know. yeah, but the, the custom yeah. stuff tends to come with uh, a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. But that also came. You know, I don't, I don't know whether it's ever going to sell, but it, there's obviously an amount of you know heritage with, with that in the provenance. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it, it's all in the Tangerine Dream of Coventry Cathedral here, and that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's sort of that era. But I don't, I don't know. I think you know, you're, I, 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 I that, that out of my. I'm, I'm not that stupid. You know, I never go for that. <laughs> but I, I don't know. You know. It would be nice to. What I love about Euro Racket, again going back to that, is it's accessible. Yeah. You know, and if you only want to spend fifty quid on a module, there's a bunch of modules you can spend fifty, 50 quid on. If you want to spend 500 quid, there's a low you can spend 500 quid on. Yeah. And if you want to spend 10 grand, then you, you, then you, then you need a bigger house because you've filled your, <laughs> you've filled your spare bedroom, haven't you? you know? mm. No, it's. Uh, I, I'm just. I'm always flabbergasted at, at what things are going for. And I. I the, 
a lot of people say it's always oh, because of collectors and i always just say no 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 it's not but it is it is now it is, it? It is. it's all people that collect things and then don't use it. and i mm -hmm. I try ever so hard not to be one of those things. I everything I buy, I want because I want to use it. Yeah. I might not use it a lot, but I want to use it rather than just stick it on a wall and dust it off every you know now and again and just say, oh look what I've got. I, I want to say, look what I've got and here's what I've done with it. But I just don't get a huge amount of opportunity to do that. I believe somebody told me this, and I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I'm, I'm sure there are people out there that know that there's a collector that has a warehouse in the States, and it's so big, it's got so much stuff in it, that it, you know, you move stuff around with like a forklift truck. Mm, yeah. and, and that's like where synthesizers go to turn <laughs> the investments, but they'll probably, you know, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> really, and I believe that my PPG Sonic Carrier ended up there, which is a bit sad, really. Yeah, but some I'm of not, these collections, like, like Vince at um, EMIAP in Philadelphia, you know that was a collection that grew and grew and grew and eventually yeah. he said look let's let's put this into a purpose built or you know a proper building and we can have people come and they can play with these things oh, good i've got no actually you know i'll retract what I said. i've got no problem with anybody collecting stuff and of course and they're great things to collect but wouldn't it be great if people can go and play with them yeah you know what when i was a kid i used to go to i still i still go to the um um vna in, in mm -hmm. uh, victoria and albert museum yeah so right to the top floor, there. I think it's still there. There's like a technology thing, like an old school tech thing. And in one of these glass cabinets, there's a VCS3. And I, I was at art school, and I went and I used to go and see that VCS3, visit it, and mm -hmm. just break it out of its case, liberate yeah. it. You know? And the poor thing has sat there for the best part of 50 years now without making a sound. Mm. It should be. Um, just get it out of the case, put it on the stand, and let people go. Yeah. It, you yeah. know, you know bring smiles to people's faces and might yeah. inspire people and there, there was i mean that mode of that one yeah the three <laughs> suits come from um, a museum in switzerland i believe oh yes but yes, it was it's mem where, yeah it was a museum it was a museum where you could go in and play with stuff so it wasn't mm. like a like a like a dead thing so you know i own nothing against mr warehouse but would you please like to put a little museum on the side yeah absolutely it's i like, mean I, I had this discussion oh. with the the people at the National Science and Media Museum in Bradford, who are part of the Science Museum from London, mm. and they have um, a sound technologies department. And the curator there, Annie, is fantastic. She's really enthusiastic about it. But she is uh, a conservator. Is that the, the correct yeah, term? Yeah. And every piece that they get in um, is. Uh, protected shall we say by a whole heap of bureaucracy and red tape mm -hmm. and if you want to turn it on there's processes and procedures and they won't let you do it unless there's a really valid reason for doing I'm, it i'm going to start that in my house yeah i know it's easy to turn that on yeah i should <laughs> start, do it on my playstation <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i know Leave that, leave that thermostat alone. You've got to sign yeah, this document exactly. in triplicate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I, I sort of get it. I mean, they are, they are preserving something, aren't they? Yeah, and that's the conversation I had with her because um, when I first visited, it was all to do with the Fairlight, and I went into the room, and there's Robin's Fairlight, which he graciously donated to the museum. And when I see a fair like the first thing I do, I go up. It's like a dog, you know. I go up to it and and introduce myself. I don't want yeah. to see all about it. So I went to drop the front panel down simply just to see what specification it had got in there, and I just literally touched the the black sprung uh, levers, and this voice from the back, which was Annie, bless her, get your hands off that. You're not allowed to touch it. And I was like, I just no. want to have a look. At no, you're not allowed to look inside. I wasn't allowed to open it, uh, and it was only after I sort of you know spoke to her very nicely. I just said, look. Let, let me quickly have a look and I can tell you what you've got so I managed to get a, a look inside but the ironic thing was is that the next time I was invited to go up there um, they said can you bring a fair light with you and I said well you've got one oh yeah but we'd like to have one working yeah. oh see it's okay to use the one that I've got downstairs yeah. but not the one that you've got locked under you know in a glass cabinet somewhere I mean um, here's the thing Ken right is all this stuff that's sitting around in, you know people's collections is doing nothing mm. it's deteriorating surely you know because you're not moving yeah. it, you're not using it things yeah. are going to dry out and... yeah yeah to be fair though 
I think they deteriorate roughly about the same amount, whether you use them or don't okay. use them, Damn. but just in different areas. Yeah. It's that kind of that sort of thing. That's <laughs> mm. But um, yeah. more if you're in a smoky studio. And, um... Yeah, but I mean, you know, like you know, the CS80 I've just done that spent nearly thirty years in a damp garage. I mean, oh. it was well, two voice cards almost worked, and the rest of it was just mm -hmm. buggered. You yeah. know, but she's a happy girl now. Mm. So, well, actually, was I was just looking. One? I was just looking mm. actually. Sorry, Bob. Um, mm. On your synthy, you mm. appear, you appear oh, to have sorry. pins into the. Um, into the C, you know, the keyboard part. Not, not the not the keyboard CB, but the actual, you know, the joystick part. Are you triggering that externally from something? Yeah, I've got the Kenton at the top in the little eight pin thing. Oh right, yeah, yeah. I've got that um, lead. What goes to the Kenton box for gate and CD? Ah, uh, that might be it. Uh, okay. I think okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's had been pulled in and out of it. I haven't been on. I mean, you know, I haven't said I use it all the time. All the stuff <laughs> is getting me back up to use, having been in various rooms in the house for the last few weeks. While, um, yeah, because she's had a few mods, hasn't she? That's modded to. It, it's got every mod Robin for twelve. That's actually a um, you know Robin build. Like uh, it's, I've had that for yeah, about fifteen yeah. years now, and. God bless him. When it when it came to you know buy it, uh, he wouldn't take any more money than he, he quoted five. No, actually, I've had it about twelve years. It was I was on the wait list for about five or six years, and he and he wouldn't take any more money than he quoted at the point of putting the deposit down, which incidentally was a check for one hundred and fifty quid that he never even cashed. <laughs> and he said, I've never met him. He's been such a lovely guy. And he yeah. sent me a, he sent me a list of mods, and they were things like you know, uh, oscillator stability, twelve pound ninety five or something. You know? yeah. And I looked at them all, and there, there's a great one like a you know expanding envelope or an eighteen twenty four dB filter. And I just went, what can we fit in? Let's just put ev everything in it. Like, yeah. Lots and lots of stuff. In it. Because I thought, being that it's a new one, not an old one, it, you know, it's mine, and yeah. you know, I hope it's not going to go anyway. So, um, you know, let's let's just go to town on that. I mean, it just raises a smile every time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I um, did a tour with that. It's, you what? Sorry. I actually toured with. with oh wow! With that. that that's played Wembley. That's a Wembley since the. I don't think anybody heard it, but it, it goes on. <laughs> it? More for effect. It was there. Yeah, we knew. Probably it wouldn't do it with an original one, though. I would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I see what I wanted, but actually, they was big money, big, big, big money. Kevin Niverson's got the. Um, I think he's still got the Tim Blake crystal machine. You know the yeah the in the in the dodgy blue foam with the star. Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that in, in at the Croydon Greyhound in the seventies, lusting oh, after that. And... Yeah. Um, just got to say thank you to Wagyu as ever. Uh, thank you for your donation. Ten chuffs. That's that's a, a double chuff. That uh, brilliant. <laughs> thank you ever so much. Um, one day I will Google um, what that equates to in in real money. Uh, I'm sure it's a, a, a lovely amount. It's Swiss, isn't it? It's got to be. It's got to be worth something. Um, and if you want to donate to us, of course you can uh, do that th uh, through the chat, um, super stickers or super chat, whatever they're called. Uh, you can donate that way. Of course, the other way to donate because I've, I've seen some requests in the chat. Um, you can uh, donate to our paypal account which is there is also the link is in the description under the video uh so plenty of ways you can do that uh thank you again to uh, wagyu for that lovely donation um i think that kind of wraps it up because we've yeah we've just we've just gone past nine o'clock and uh that's been absolutely brilliant um let me just remind everyone uh what we've got coming up so obviously we've had mel uh today uh, we're going to follow Mel next week with the uh, the very wonderful, and I'm super excited about this, uh, Dave Caulfield from uh, X of Akai and another 
um, music electronic uh, uh, electronic music and technology companies. Uh, Dave is putting together, I believe, a documentary on Akai, um, and he's gathering stuff together. So he's going to come on and tell us all about that next week. Um, and then after that, we've got this this absolute legend, uh, Benj Ben Edwards. Um, standing there resplendent in a turtleneck sweater in front of masses of modular equipment of various makes and models. Uh, and if you haven't already, uh, please go and check out episode five of the Mean Tune show, uh, which is on his channel, his YouTube channel, which is Zach Dagaba. Uh, it's an utterly brilliant half an hour piece of entertainment uh, of music technology and video technology as well. So he's on the show uh, at the end of... Um, at the end of August, and then kicking off the month of September, uh, we're going to be joined by Paulie Alex Bow, um, who is doing the rounds and, and making lots of appearances on Sonic State. Um, but they've got a great new project um, that they're going to tell us all about on uh, September 2nd. Following that, old friend of me, uh, Jem Godfrey, is going to be on the show telling us um, about his recent acquisition, which was a Series 3 Fairlight, which used to belong to uh, Brad Feidel or Fiedel or however you want to pronounce it. It was the one that was used on Terminator 2. And there's a there's a big story about how he got that and eventually got it up and running in his studio. And of course, he's the keyboard player with Frost and Frost are going out on tour again uh, later this year. So we'll, I'm sure we'll hear all about that. Uh, we've also got coming up in September, we've got Bob Coover uh, from Groove Synthesis, who's going to tell us all about the third wave, which is this wonderful uh, PPG inspired and beyond instrument, which I absolutely love. And everybody that I've spoken to uh, has had a chance to play it has told me how wonderful it is and has just made me really sick because I really, really want one. Um, we've also got Mitchell Sigmund and Dan Goldstein from Cherry Audio coming on the show September 16th. That's just been confirmed. So they'll be able to tell us a few weeks after what this thing is that's coming out next week. So we're doing timey-wimey stuff here again. But yeah, they're going to be telling us all about the... Um, uh, the, the new thing I almost said what it was going to be there um, so yeah that's September 16th and then at uh, the beginning of December um, fingers crossed if all goes uh, to plan David Gamson uh, ex of Scritti Politti and of course producer extraordinaire uh, is going to be joining us at the very beginning of, uh, of December so lots of great people coming up on the show um, and of course we just had uh, another great person on the show Mel thank you ever so much for oh, joining us today it's an absolute pleasure it always no, is really. thank you. love it. the love the vivian westwood t-shirt i should have cracked out one of mine to uh oh, to yeah. compliment you but i ha i'm contractually obliged now to wear our stuff of course if you want our merchandise then um please go to our facebook page and find the link to viper graphics uh viper graphics are the company that are uh, making these for us at the moment and you can buy t-shirts polo shirt, shirts and hoodies at the moment i don't we're gonna try and branch out and do a few other things as well um so that'll be uh, cool but if you want one of these they're very reasonably priced and they're very good quality um so go to our facebook page and look for the viper graphics link and if you can't find it just get in touch with us and we'll let you know where to get that um thank you again to everyone in the chat you've all been absolutely amazing and thank you for your contributions and um it's just uh, we do it for you and the fact that you love it and you donate to us and you get involved just is just rewarding itself. So thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, if you're going to Leeds tomorrow, make sure you let us know, take some pictures, share them on our Facebook page at the modular meet that's going on there. Um, but we will see you next week, of course, with Ben, hopefully back from his uh, gig. He can tell us all about um, supporting Heaven 17 tonight. If you're in the Northwich area, um, then you know maybe you can sneak in round the back and, and get a look-see. Um, but we'll be back same time, same place next week, as I said, uh, with Dave Caulfield, ex of Akai. So that's going to be a super exciting show to, to watch. Um, Kent, you got anything what? special lined up for this weekend? Just uh... avoid the heat, get in the air conditioned? No, I have... No? I've got to do um, a small job to the Mustang tomorrow. Oh, mm. anything particular? Plugs, leads, <laughs> points, oil. Did you tell Mel that you've bought a, a Mustang Mach 1? No. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, plugs, leads, oil, that's just regular CSAC, right? 
It it is the CS80 <laughs> of the car world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like a bit lighter than the CS80. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fiona Fiona oh, um, showed me a website. She goes, "Oh look, apparently you can fit the new type of supercharger from the new Mustang to the '73 one." Oh, an additional 700 horsepower. Oh. <laughs> no, the bloody thing doesn't stop now. I should come and see it. I should come and see it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's a big old girl. It's a big old girl. Happy. There you go. Uh, there's the link. Sorry, just for, uh, there's the link for our merchandise, uh, vipergraphics.co.uk. Thanks for putting that in there, Sass. Um, brilliant. Um, anything <laughs> sort of immediate coming up in your immediate future, Mel? Uh, sending some mixes over to nice. Los Angeles and hoping that they go absolutely so. Fantastic. Uh, uh, no, not really. Wedding over no. next week. Lovely. Lovely. So, doing, um, doing, buying flowers, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, have a lovely time and Thank send you. our best to, to your lady wife. And uh, any chance of a node reunion anytime soon? Because oh. we'd all absolutely love that. Well, the thing is, I mean, you're really talking to the Ronnie Wood of the band. You know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm the oh, that's good. And, and, you know, I've only been with him for 10 years and nothing happens without Mick and Keith saying so. You know? Yeah. And so who, who do I need to ask? Is it Flood? Because I'll never get him. Oh, Jesus. Well, uh, you know, without, without you know, pointing the finger at anybody in particular, because, you know, no, no world that works. The, the, the clock runs at a different rate to the normal world. <laughs> yeah. But... Flood is just, just uh, impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Flood, well, you're all, you're all busy yes, people. You're not. But if you were watching this, you know, because <laughs> I, I, I think we would all love to do something. There is rumours of um, some early material maybe coming out, which oh. is before I join, kind of painted black era, that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. So obviously, you know, <laughs> but when I joined, um, yeah. Um, I do like I that think, analogy. I would though. love to, love to, love to, love to do something. There you well, go. Or, well, we'll try and get Ed on the show. We'll try and bully him into, yeah. into doing yeah. something. And we've already had uh, um, Dave on the show. Yeah, Dave. We'll get, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we'll, we'll see if we can get the full set, the full node that'd set. Good, wouldn't it? Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. That be, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. You know what you should do? You should get us all on, Ooh. right, at wow. the same time. And just tell each of you, could you mind doing, you get a few sounds up? Yeah, and then yeah. all, before you know it, we're all playing together. And then prompt you live, oh, yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> and then going flood. Get your modules fixed, mate. Yeah, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then it wouldn't sound like flood if everything yeah. worked. You know, yeah, it, it's it true. Yeah. Wouldn't be the same. <laughs> yeah. The fact that doesn't work in his world. It sounds like flood, you know. Oh, but we'll have to work on that one. They're challenge accepted. Yeah, we'll, we'll try yeah. that. Anyway. Okay. um to everyone that's watching to you gentlemen mel and kent thank you ever so much for joining um, as per it's been a brilliant show hope you've enjoyed it uh if you have enjoyed this please do again like share subscribe comment underneath the video if you haven't already uh good or bad we like them all it's all engagement apparently uh so thanks ever so much for watching take great care and we will see you same time same place next week ta-ra thank you very much Cheers. bye, bye.